Okay, I wanted to go over witness 12 real quick, so let's get started. Ma'am, can you state your name for the record, please? Okay, could you raise your right hand, ma'am? Yeah. That would be uh, yes. Okay. Ma'am, my name is Bernie Delarue. I'm the assistant state attorney uh, in Jacksonville assigned to this case involving, obviously, uh, something that happened outside your residence. My understanding is you were home that night when it happened, that Sunday night? Yes. Okay. And did you hear something going on? Yes. And at some point you looked out the window, is that correct? Yes. Did you do that more than one time? Yes. Okay. Uh so far... All he's really getting her to say is yes. Apparently, he's already uh, listened to her, and he's just getting her to make these statements or to say yes to everything that he's saying at this point. Uh, at some point, did you actually see or hear something that draw your attention to that? Was there somebody's uh, well, How would you describe what was going on outside? First, we heard like a howling sound. Okay. And then the second time, we heard uh, a more clearly help sound. Okay, okay. Could you say who was saying help or not? I could, okay, I couldn't. Right. And if you listen to this investigator, he says, okay, okay, and this is what they, before they interview them on tape, they, I'm not sure this guy's doing it, but generally they'll, they'll tell them what they're going to be going through, what to expect, and in that process, they lead them, they tell them, um, you know, when we get to a certain, when I, when I ask you a question, answer the question as directly as possible um, and don't add anything. He doesn't want to get to the truth. He just wants to get his case and close his case. So he doesn't, he really wants to avoid um, gathering exculpatory, exculpatory evidence because he's forced to give that information to the defendant and of course he doesn't want to be working for the defendant for free so he's cutting her off okay okay and you listen to it and then the second time we heard uh, a more clearly help sound okay okay could you say who was saying help or not I could, okay, I couldn't right. and you looked out where, did you see uh, when you first looked out were the people standing up or on the ground? At first, I couldn't see anything. It was dark. Okay. The second time I looked, um, I, I looked so many times outside. I don't know right. which one you switched. No, that's fine. But you can see he's like, okay, okay. He didn't want her to say too much, but at this point, she's in the middle of her answer, and he can't stop her, and he's just really concerned that what she's going to say. So he's like, oh, that's that's fine. Let's zoom back a little bit. This is really a short clip, so. Okay, okay. Could you say who was saying help or not? I could, okay, I couldn't. Right. And you looked out, where, did you see, uh, when you first looked out, were the people standing up or on the ground? At first, I couldn't see anything. It was dark. Okay. Second time I looked, um, I, I looked so many times outside. I don't know right. which one you switched. No, that's fine. But um, I know when I, when I first, when I remember, it's, it was too dark. And then a guy was on top of another guy, okay. and and the shot. Okay, so the shot was after you first you first saw somebody on top of another guy. Okay, is that a yes? Yes. Okay. So here what here's what we have. We have a witness who said she, it was too dark to see anything, so it was too dark. So then she kept looking out, and she she could hear the noises. She could hear the 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 yelling for help. But he doesn't really want that to come out. He's, you know, at this point, I think he realizes these are George's yells for help, and he doesn't want this. So he's just, he's not going for the, he doesn't want to talk about that. He wants to talk about, listen, listen back. The second time I looked, um, I, I looked so many times outside. I don't know right. which one you switched. No, but um, I know when I, when I first, when I remember it's, it was too dark. And then a guy was on top of another guy, okay. and and the shot. Okay, so the shot was after you first. You first so she she heard the struggle, and she heard the shot, and the only thing that she can give us is you know he was it was too dark to see it was too dark to see she kept looking out it was too dark to see finally she looks out at some point but she doesn't know when she just knows at some point she's able to see uh, one guy on top of another guy. Although it's really too dark to see. And, you know, again, 
she's not able to see the the skin or to see the color of the clothes or anything else that other people are able to see. She's obviously too far away, I would assume. First of all, somebody on top of another guy? Okay. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Now, in terms of the, could you describe, um, did you look at the faces of the guy on top or the guy on bottom? No, it was too dark. Okay. Um, could you describe in terms of what clothing they were wearing, the guy on top or the guy on bottom? Uh, it was too dark. It was too dark. It was too dark to see the clothes. It was too dark to see the face. She's uh, she just pretty much not a great witness as far as that's concerned. One thing she was able to help us with, and that is the sound, the muffled sounds, or the sounds where we're getting this uh, the noises that he was looking for, the smothering noises. I think I'm not sure. It just <clears throat> There's a couple witnesses that g that come across where they're they're giving us this sound like the word help is trying to come out, but it only comes it does, the the p doesn't make it out. It's like help help. So let's continue. Okay. Yeah. How would you describe their physique at all? Of the guy on top or the guy on bottom? So why would he ask that? Obviously, he's trying to say that. Uh, He's trying to get her to say that George is on top and Trevon's on bottom. But we already know that's not true. John, John was there within, he was he was there very close within 10 or 15 feet. And he could see very clearly. In fact, he could see the skin on George's face. So why he's trying to get that from this witness it doesn't make any sense. I mean, George, obviously... Um, John is not going to be the kind of witness that they're just going to be able to toss to the curb. He's the guy that saw up close. So this this lady can't see anything. She's uh, looked out several times and hadn't been able to see, and then suddenly she can. So let's continue. I know after seeing the the, the, t the, the TV of what's happening, okay. comparing their pictures. Okay. So now she's talking about what she saw on TV. She's telling the the investigator, and he's and he keeps saying, "Okay, okay, okay," because he's trying to get her to not talk about the TV. That's not helping his case. That's not what he wants her to say. Don't say TV. Say, "Oh, he was. Uh, you know, I knew that it was." that uh, I saw a big man get off. That's what, she, that's what he wanted her to say, that I saw a, a big man, not a little, little guy, not a thin guy. But no, she said, because she saw on TV that Trevon was this little tiny guy. See, that's where, that's, that was the problem. She pictured Trevon as this 12-year-old, and she looked at, at uh, George as this thick-necked monster. So, obviously she was being deceived by the media like everybody else, and that was affecting her witness. Because what, what she actually saw, if she saw it, was two people, one on top of another. And if you would suggest that Trevon looks small, I would say, take, take a guy with 168 pound six foot two frame or whatever tight he is and put a put a hoodie on him put a you know a loose hoodie like the one we see in the in the uh 7-eleven picture makes it real easy all you got to do is go look at that picture he looks huge in that picture he's a big guy you compare him to the other people that come into the store and look at the after he leaves look at the line on the wall and compare that line and how tall he is on that line to other people that come into the store. He's the tallest guy that ever comes into the store during the time that I'm there, that I see, that I sit and watch that whole hour. Nobody ever is as tall as he is. I think Zimmerman is definitely on top because of his size. Okay, so the guy on top, to you, it appeared to be bigger? Yes. Is that correct? And yes. when you say bigger, what do you mean by that? Compared to Martin. Okay, like bigger in terms of your describing. 
Oh, she just did it again. And just he's trying to hurry on by that one. Hope no one heard it. She said, compared to Martin. How can you compare to Martin? She doesn't know what Martin looked like at the time. She had no clue. She was going by these these pictures in the in the on TV, this twelve year old child. Obviously she's confused. So anything she says, obvious it, it's garbage. I mean like width, like heavier. Yeah. Okay. Right Broader. Yes. Okay. And you're saying that you saw Mr. Zimmerman on TV and also uh, Mr. Martin's pictures, and you know now that one is bigger than the other. Yeah. So he had to resolve that issue with the TV. So he was just trying to wash that away by saying the reason she brought it up was because she saw it on TV and she knew that one was bigger than the other. What he didn't want to say was she doesn't have the facts on the on the pictures. When she, when she said, yeah, why didn't he say, you mean the picture where he's in the little orange shirt or the little red shirt? Or, is, or are you talking about the one where he's in the baseball uniform? Or are you talking about the one where he's wearing the grill and he's shooting the birds to the camera? Which, one, which picture are you talking about for Trevon? Because remember, we've gone from age, I think it went down as low as 11. I know they've got baby pictures out there. I've seen them. But that's just for the emotional part. People were assuming that Trevon was anywhere from 11 years old to about 14 or so, I think is what they had pictured in the in the media. So she's figuring that this, this big guy that was on top couldn't have been this little baby. And, and this in investigator doesn't want to bring that information to light. So he's just saying, okay, okay, okay. Okay. All right. And has anybody threatened you in any way to get you to make this statement? No. Okay. Has anybody made you any promise in order to get you to make this statement? No. Okay. Thank you. You notice how as soon as she says no, he says, okay. Because that's the clue. That's the sign. He told her before. You know, when I say okay, that's it. That's the end of the statement. Stop talking. So, it's obvious. I'll sit here and go over every one of these witnesses' statements, and I'm going to tear apart where this investigator made these mistakes. And I know that they let him go, or they, or he voluntarily moved out of this investigation. But uh, whatever was gathered by him was biased. We need to go right back to what the Florida Department of Law did originally before this case was turned into a, a, a riot, a circus for the race baiters. Good talking to you guys.